Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful. Paul Ellering's in the ring. <laughs> this Good actually Lord. is the same Paul Ellering that I saw with the final judgment on Raw Monday. Yes, the same human being. Yeah. So a lot of you, uh, your memories of Paul Ellering begin with like the Road Warriors. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he wore a suit and everything. And like, you know, the Road Warriors are all jacked up. Bald. And, you know, every now and then you'd hear that, uh, you know, it's Paul Ellering's, he's a power lifter. He's, he's, but you only saw him in a suit or whatever. And so you're kind of like, eh, you know, maybe he lifted some weights or whatever. But he ain't hawk. He ain't animal. It's fucking guy on this show, pretty Paul Ellering. First off, he's ripping off superstar Billy Graham. A copy of a like, copy of a copy of Billy Graham. Everybody did. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Got bleached blonde hair. He is more jacked than Hawk and Animal in this segment. He is yoked absolutely fucking gigantic his shoulders are like this wide he's got no waist but like a 10 pack of abs he is fucking the biggest guy on this show by miles and he's out there totally playing pro wrestler he is he is a guy he's a bodybuilder playing superstar billy graham for halloween i was entertained i don't get me wrong but i was watching this and you know, the first thing they say is, uh, you know, pretty Paul Ellering's been out with an injury, but he's back. And I see this guy and I thought, that's not Paul Ellering. Like, what wrestler is pretending to be Paul Ellering to make fun of the guy that's out injured? And then, like, 10, 15 seconds in, he starts talking. I realize that actually is fucking Paul Ellering. And he's just like, he's going on and on and on and on. And speaking of Halloween, did you guys see the ref? I mean this in the nice way possible, but I think it was a guy wearing a mask. Hmm. Yeah. It was a weird-looking fella, this referee. There were a couple of those in the show. Yeah. So my favorite part of this, my first favorite part was Ellering referring to himself as Precious Paul the Living Doll. Yes. Mm -hmm. My second favorite part of this was, uh, you know how uh, we often harp on NXT for not using enough graphics to identify people? What I did in anyone, they really didn't have that many graphics. They had them in the start of the match. They were there, but... Uh, you couldn't count on graphics to get yourself over. You had to get your own name out there. So Paul Ellering got some version of his name, either Ellering or Precious Paul or just Precious. He got his name in there five times before he was asked a single question. Yep. <laughs> yes. Then he went back and checked. Ten times overall, he got his name yes! on television. Yes. A pro, this Precious Paul. He was referring to himself in the third person long before Rock thought about it. That's right. That's How it. many, what year was this, 81? 81. Yep. 81. Okay, so 45 years ago. Close enough. Okay. How many of these NXT stars are going to be on TV in 45 years? Few. Okay. Well, one one guy is on TV 45 years later because he got his name on TV fucking 10 times in one promo. Yes. So he challenges the Iron Geek. I mean, Sheik. I laughed. Yeah, he wants to take up the club challenge. Precious Paul backs down from no man, he says. And if he's a man, he'll do the same. I couldn't believe he's Let's a, wrestle! I couldn't believe he's a baby face. He's a baby face here, and he has a match against Don Serrano. It's a squash. It is a bad one. There's a reason Precious Paul ended up a manager. Mm -hmm. Everything he did looked bad. He won with a neckbreaker. Now, I will say, <laughs> not as bad as his opponent. I, I was entertained by, by he, was, he was a guy playing pro wrestler. Yes. He did the most wacky, dramatic elbow drops on this guy over and over again. I was dying watching this. Neckbreaker looked bad, too. Uh, the uh, guy bumped way too late. And, and it just took all the uh, neck trauma on the Paul's shoulder. I think, I, go ahead. Sorry, I think there was a moment where Ellering whipped him into the ropes and he was going to knee him in the stomach. Well, there was a brief pause, and then Serrano like, wrapped himself around Ellering's leg <laughs> like a bear mm -hmm. and then just fell over. Yeah, Yeah, Maybe. this was not good. It did occur to me, it's a shame that this Paul Ellering was not the Paul Ellering managing the Road Warriors. Can you imagine this precious Paul out there with Hawking Animal? Totally different vibe. They would never need the stupid puppet, that's for sure. That's true, that's true. Mike Boyer versus the new Louisiana champion, Junkyard Dog. Speaking of weird-looking dudes, this Mike Boyer. The closest I could get was like Brad Garrett with a much worse haircut. I got Herb from WKRP in Cincinnati. Yeah, okay. that's up there. That's good. Yeah, Herb Tarlick. Yes. I was busy watching Junkyard Dog be very agile. And yoked. Oh, yeah. He was a huge jacked up dude. And, and But lean? He not... pinned this guy quickly with a power slam. He's moving great. He looked like Kimbo Slice with hair. Yeah, he looked great. He was in better shape then 
when he was when he was in WWE. Significantly. Well, that's how he got to be a big star, and then he was a big star. Didn't have to be in that kind of shape anymore, I guess. Plus, Vince was taking all the big guys from all the other promotions. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I like this big. He whips the dude in, and he goes to hit the ropes himself, and he's coming. He hits the ropes, and he kicks that left foot up in the air like a rocket. And then comes off with a big running forearm. And gets the big old thump for the win. An excellent squash match this was. Yes, I enjoyed it. Paul Orndorff and Mississippi champion Bob Orton Jr. Versus Carlos Zapata and the Monk. The only forever. reason he was called the Monk is because he was bald. He didn't have a, like a He did last robe. week. He had a robe last week. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So now the gimmick's over. He doesn't need to carry the robe with him. What I couldn't figure out is this is obviously a squash match. Mm-hmm. But like the stars kept hitting moves and going for covers, and the and the jobber would kick out. Yeah, it was like, don't do that. Well, try to win. Just no, hit him with a bunch of fucking moves and pin him. <laughs> because every time you, every time Paul Orndorff hits a giant fucking move on a jobber and the jobber kicks out, it's like your move sucks. You couldn't pin that geek. I went. I once went to Buddy's and Rip Rogers was doing a seminar. You think I was rough? You mm. should have heard Rip giving this exact same speech, except. He said it in a way I can't. Man, he would not have been happy about that. Don't have these nerds keep kicking out of your fucking moves. And it wasn't just Orndorff and Orton working over both these guys. They worked over Zapata for like 95% of this match. They, they, they cut off Zapata before the monk ever, ever got in there. They beat him, and they beat him, and they beat him like... Am I going to see the monk get a hot tag? <laughs> and I did. And he hit the ring. He hit like one axe handle. Orndorff completely ignored it and beat the shit out of him. Yeah. The Lord was not with the monk on this day. He wasn't. And Orndorff wins with, guess what, everybody? A, a figure, figure four, four leg, leg, leg lock. A very popular move in Mid-South Wrestling. Bob Roop versus Mike George. A tank of a man, that's Mike George. I was watching Bob Roop. Bob Roop is a, he's Bob Roop. Yes. Do you realize that in high school, is his, uh, I, I did I did amateur wrestling in junior high. And uh, I lost every single match, so I just quit. Hmm. Bob Roop in high school did uh, did wrestling, and and he went. I think it was like O and twenty three. O and twenty two. O and twenty two. And then like he got a, a new coach, and then the next year he went twenty seven and O. And then he ended up an Olympian. <laughs> yes. So he what the <laughs> fuck did I quit for? God damn it! Oh well. What was the first coach doing? <laughs> <laughs> Not coaching. I guess so. Maybe it was Mr. Wardlow. Because I didn't do too well in junior high wrestling. Yeah, yeah. So they are grappling back and forth, and Roop can't get an advantage. And finally, he cheats. He drags the eyes across the ropes like an asshole. Mm. So Mike makes his comeback, and he fights fire with fire. He rakes Roop's eyes across the rope. He goes for a leg sweep. Mike George does. Gets a two count. Tries it again, but this time Roop grabs the ropes to block it. And then uh, they're going back and forth, and George makes a cover. Roop kicks out. George just rolls out of the ring to the cement floor, which is cement, so it hurts. And he goes, da! And that cuts him off. Just... He lands right on his arm. Yeah, yeah. And he gets back in the ring, misses a charge, hits the post. Did he ever? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He did a shoot hit the post. Yeah. He hit that post so hard. At the side of his head. Knocked himself that's, out. That's, that's, yeah. that's next. That's later. But he's, he hits the post with the shoulder, so his, his arm's bad now, so he's throwing jabs and chops with his left arm, pointing to his batter to the ref, saying, my arm's fucked up. And so finally, Roop grabs him. That's when he throws him very hard into the buckle. And yes, uh, George's head whiplashes hither and yon. Yeah, and you're supposed to get your hands up, and he hit it with the side of his neck. He got his hands up and like to the sides. <laughs> and yes, he, he took the. Uh, I like this match a lot. He took the turnbuckle with his head, which then hit his shoulder. Yeah, and Roop hit a running knee and pinned him. This yeah. match ruled. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it was it was kind of slow going for the first half, but the, the the last couple of minutes of this match was like a UFC match. A beating. It, they beat the fuck out of each other, and it was like it was pretty crazy. I mean, it was slow going by twenty twenty four standards. There was. You know, there's Actually, no the here. heat was slow because at the very beginning, Bob just like violently attacked him. Yeah, they're clubbing and he each just other. Stopped him and stomped him and stomped him. It's and intense. I thought he was blow himself up. Yeah, but he didn't. No, he's an Olympian. It's impressive. Yeah, he this was an Olympian good... long before he was. Well, in sure, but still, this was a good Haas fight. And the thing I noticed about it, both these guys could throw a punch. Hell yeah, they both looked great. This uh, Mike George was end would end his career as a jobber in WCW. That's what I saw. Ed Wiskowski versus Mike Bond. Ed massacres him, wins with a backbreaker. Mm-hmm. He may still be selling this backbreaker. <laughs> that guy was. <laughs>
Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.